Hey, all my Gemini friends, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Terry Hunter. I'm an intuitive astrologer, and I'm here today with Gemini Rising's June 2023 monthly horoscope. These horoscopes are based on whole sign Western astrology. So if you're not familiar or don't know your rising sign, all you need is your time of birth and location. And you can go to any one of the free birth calculators on the internet and get that information. So I believe that this month is uh, just another in uh, almost feels as if it is a cumulative effect of awareness that we are being um, offered as humans. This month, Saturn is going to go retrograde, but even more important than the retrograde throughout the whole month of June, Saturn will station at seven degrees. We have seen Neptune at 27 degrees and Neptune is staying at 27 degrees throughout the whole month of June before it retrogrades on June 30th. We have Venus entering Leo for four months and then we have Pluto re-entering into Capricorn. All of these things are long-term um, dynamics that I think have a lot of potential for reward, but they're asking us to be very intentional and to be very real with our own sense of desires and our needs. <clears throat> for Gemini, uh, Pisces is your 10th house. So Saturn entered, I believe uh, it was May, I can't, I'm sorry, March early part of March, I can't quite remember the date, uh, it entered your 10th house of career and of public image. Saturn's going, as I said, to seven degrees, and then it's going to retrograde back to the zero degree before moving forward again. At the same time, Neptune is in the 10th house of career, and it's stationing at 27 degrees. So for me, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking to myself, this is an opportunity to implement balance. This is an opportunity as Saturn sits at seven degrees for a full month in the year 2023, which is a seven year. This year is the theme of this year is introspection through our intellectual body, meaning a sense of separating ourselves from the emotional human journey of up and down and looking at things from a broader perspective, a very Libran perspective. So it's asking to assess things where we're creating harmony, where we're purporting our own peace and our own sense of well-being. I think this is very important because as Saturn retrogrades, it's going to give us an opportunity to reevaluate the things in your 10th house. For instance, your career, uh, how you're seen in the public eye. The 10th house rules a visibility. Oftentimes we'll just refer to it as authority, government, and high positions of career, but it's a, it's a visible spot to those around you. It is a spot when you get engaged. We see a change of status in the 10th house. When you become a parent, uh, we see a change of status in the 10th house. So here, I believe for my Geminis, the combination of Saturn asking you how much hard work you're willing to put into your Piscean energies, meaning looking at where you've wanted to run away and escape from whatever your 10th house dynamics are and where you can truly build upon them to create a more sustainable situation that plays to Neptune in your 10th house, meaning where you can enjoy a sense of connection to the divine, to express your creativity, to practice and to trust your intuitive body, to, to gain a sense of and maybe even create your own hybrid of your spirituality, taking bits and pieces of information as Gemini likes to do and braiding them together to build something that suits you and allows you a better or clearer path for moving your story forward. Um, we see um, Neptune is going to be making an aspect, a sextile to Pluto as Pluto retrogrades into Capricorn. And this is gonna go on for the rest of the year because Pluto is gonna move from 29 to 27 degrees 
in the house of Capricorn. And this sextile is a favorable aspect to Neptune, meaning it's a favorable aspect of removing the fog. It's a favorable aspect for looking at how the fog served us at one point, but it doesn't serve us anymore. Looking at where we potentially have given up our power to another person in hopes that something would happen that would benefit us, but it doesn't benefit us. And now we must claim our lives in a more... Uh, determined and intense way. Pluto's very intense, and yet Neptune is very watery. And these two making a positive aspect almost feels as if Neptune is softening Pluto's intensity and Pluto is, is infusing a little bit of backbone into Neptune's energy here. So I think that's important. I think that the overall theme of this month, again, is an integration of an awareness of our epiphanies, of the things that have uh, been deconstructed. And as we are reconstructing or renovating those structures, those thoughts, those beliefs, we are also uh, uh, determining where to keep what is historic, what is traditional, what has worked, and then to be able to modify that which has anchored us in, in a way that's more fear-based and isolating than we want it to be. Um, we have Venus moving into Leo the beginning of June. Uh, she does it, I believe, two days after uh, the full moon in Sagittarius. And as she does that, she's going to be making an opposition to um, Pluto. So we have, uh, for my Geminis, Venus is going to move into your third house. And this opposition is going to be in, um, it's, it's kind of funky because technically Leo is um, the opposition is to Aquarius, right? But because of, it's kind of an out of sign opposition because the degrees are pulling them into that uh, tense dynamic. And at the same time, meaning Pluto moving into the late degrees of Capricorn, and while Venus is still traversing, say, the four to nine degrees of, of um, Leo, they're going to still be having a conversation. And this tense conversation feels as if it has the potential to be a bridge builder where Pluto is actually trying to protect Venus from undermining herself through her potential insecurities. Um, having uh, Venus be in your third house of Leo, there could be the potentials that, you know, you're wanting to birth something within your um, net, your social network. There could be the potentials that your everyday life somehow gets slightly disrupted, or even your finances might get a little bit interrupted. But I think if, you know, if there's a layoffs or if there's changes in your jobs or there's changes in the everyday communications with members of your team, part of that is to bring an illumination because Venus is also having a conversation with Saturn during this process. And she's kind of they're not seeing each other. It's like a blindside conversation. Um, let me look this way. Um, Venus is, again, she is at four to nine degrees of Leo when she's starting to make this injunction to Saturn in Pisces. And I, I don't know what, what I said in the far of the degrees with um, the early degrees of Leo and the late degrees of Capricorn will still make an opposition with Pluto and Venus. So at the same time that that is happening, or shortly thereafter, Venus starts to have a blindsiding weird epiphany because of Saturn. It's as if something from your history comes up out of nowhere and gives you an opportunity to assess it, but from your evolved version of yourself, from this place of where you have sort of uprooted a toxic toxic or you've identified a toxic energy in your life and yet at the same time I don't want to get rid of that particular person I want to be able to shift the energy and this may be where Saturn saying to Venus then you're going to have to work on you you're going to have to pay attention to you rather than trying to go to the other side and fix that 
Um, this feels very powerful and really good. Saturn is also making a sextile to Jupiter throughout this month. Uh, Saturn's having various conversations with the node, but I think that the sextile to Jupiter is very powerful um, because when this starts, it's a real review of my history, which rewrites my beliefs and both Jupiter and Saturn bring wealth. Saturn does it through endurance and through hard work through, and I think the hard work is mental and emotional hard work of trusting my vision of myself while I'm walking through the unknown. And Jupiter offers expansion of my beliefs and my faith in myself, and in doing so offers me good luck and bounty. So while Saturn's having all these conversations with these various planets in various, you know, different ways, there is a cohesiveness to it because one thing helps lead to the epiphany or the uplifting or the release or or the liberation from something that tied me down. Now we also have Saturn actually going retrograde on the 17th of June. And this is the same day as the new moon in Gemini at 26 degrees. So this is your new moon. The new moon is making a square to Neptune stationed at 27 degrees in Pisces. So you have this dynamic where um, the new moon in your first house squaring Neptune is kind of this part of yourself that is going to feel as if, you know, Gemini is ruled by Mercury. Mercury rules information, short bits of information, you know, kind of gathering this, 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 and this, and then dispensing that information around the Zodiac. Now, there with this tense conversation with Neptune, it's kind of like, have you determined what that information is before you spread it? And meaning you may be operating on an old way of thinking that's foggy, that is erosive to you that holds you small in some way and then there's this new evolved version of yourself where you're starting to be more discerning with the small bits of information that are coming at you and you're using Neptune's energy to create a bridge between you and the divine that helps you understand any disruption is actually trying to mush, mush you maybe you'll feel mushed but push you inspire you into a lane that's more authentic to the truth of your heart. The little thing about Gemini and Mercury is that because it's all about teaching other people, speaking, writing, and, and gathering information, it, and it rules our everyday activities and the interactions with the people of our everyday life, you know, our teammates, our workmates, our schoolmates, a lot of that can become a, 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 almost a, it's a life of its own, a circular motion of its own. And I think that the square during the new moon is offering you an opportunity to plant seeds to sort of slow the roll so you can make intentional choices, intentional thoughts. And this is why I think Saturn's influence with Jupiter and with Venus and now, you know, influencing on some level this, this new moon. Because I, I really do think that while there's not a technical aspect to it, the overlay of Saturn is sitting there while I'm experiencing this new moon. Now we also have, I'm kind of going out of order for myself. Um, I just want to mention too that while Venus enters Leo and begins her her opposition with Pluto, uh, there's also, she starts uh, to join that grand fixed square which is between the nodes and um, the Leo and Aquarius late degrees Capricorn energy. So I feel like these are karmic choices. The North node is joined by Jupiter during this period of time, while the conjunction is growing at the same time, these uh, the North Node is a strong energy of being ravenous for a new experience, being ravenous for an evolved version of myself, just being almost insatiable in, in my I'm so anxious to move the story forward. And Jupiter's expanding that while at the same time, the South Node is slowing it down. And so is Pluto because Pluto rules the South Node right now. And this is about digging to the deeper parts of the psychology of how you're taking your actions. So Gemini, if for some reason you're being so dutiful to those around you that you're depleting yourself, 
you may find yourself in a place in a almost like the universe put you in a timeout of some sort. Saturn's conversations could put you in a timeout, but that isn't about punishing you. It's offering you an opportunity to slow down. Your ruling planet in the month of June is going to cover three signs. It's going to finish its sojourn through Taurus. It's going to zip through uh, Gemini and then in, into Cancer, all within the June period of time. So, you know, while Mercury is kind of excited to move the story forward, I think at the same time, Saturn is being saying, how are you going to take those steps? Because those steps, if, if you move a little bit too quickly, you may miss an important piece of information. Okay. What else did I want to say? I think that was it. So basically for the month of June, we have your 10th house highlighted because the 10th house is where we see Neptune and Saturn. We see your third house of everyday activities highlighted for the next four months. So I think this is very important to start to do things that you love and really self-care. And then we have Pluto moving into the transformational eighth house, which it naturally rules. And having it be for you, Gemini, the Cap uh, Capricorn energy, it's going to transform your fears, your trepidations, your unsuredness of yourself, and ask you to master at a very deep level your willingness to be brave in what it is that you desire, and then to allow yourself the privilege of learning more about it, speaking more about it, thinking more about it, and delineating between that which you are in somewhat enslaved to, and then that which you are inspired by. And as you move towards what you are inspired by, the universe will align to foster your inspirations and encourage you and support your dreams. All right. I think that's it for me for June. I hope I got all my points. I'm being a little choppy lately. Forgive me. All right, my Geminis have a wonderful June. I hope that if you um, would like to get a reading with me, you can reach out through my uh, email below in the description. I am available. Uh, I don't post any pricing on my website. Uh, I enjoy conversations with my people. Plus I'm not very good at changing my website. So I left it sort of the way it was. And finally, excuse me, as I wrap this up, um, please join me Sunday mornings live at 11 a.m. Pacific time. That's where we look at the transits for the week ahead. And then we do a little angel reading and a tarot card for each one of the signs to get the angel's advice for traversing the week's uh, transits ahead. So I hope you'll join me then. Thank you so much. Please like, please subscribe, please share, and I will see you soon. Peace out, Gemini.